is Susan Sun on the maker with sunisafuture.net, right in the booth of uh, Perlite Solar with Gideon Needleman. And we'd like Mr. Needleman to tell us a little bit about his company and what kind of products and services they will be able to provide for us. Go right. Ahead. Well, thanks, Susan. Welcome to our booth. We're here at PV America, and uh, it's actually our second year at the PV America show. Uh, I really like it. It's a nice, uh, more local type show here for the Eastern Market. Mm -hmm. And uh, Perlite is a solar module manufacturer, so as you wander around, you'll see lots of different examples of solar panels that we produce. Uh, we've uh, parent company has been in business since uh, 1982, so we've got a nice history, more than 30 years right now. And uh, we've been in the U.S. market for a good number of years as well. Uh, in fact, uh, we opened up some uh, production cap capacity in the U.S. Our modules are coming out of Texas. And uh, that's in addition to our original Chinese manufacturing capacity uh, mm -hmm. back in Asia. So we offer a little bit of both, um, great quality panels and high efficiencies. We really love it. Thanks. Oh, fantastic. What kind of efficiency level are we talking about here? Uh, well, our highest efficiency modules, uh, the monocrystalline side, go, go over 15% right now. And uh, moving large volumes of those, that's very nice and always improving. Very good. Now, in doing business on both continents, both in North America and Asia, um, how do you find the company juggling these positions? Is it um, a very uh, appealing way for uh, continued expansion, or do you find any challenges? Uh, well, yeah, there's always challenges in balancing uh, how things operate in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. but um, you have to look at things strategically. Mm -hmm. Asia has a very big growing economy with a growing demand for energy. Uh, at the same time, we all hope that the U.S. is able to uh, step in and, and lead, really, with, with how things should be done, especially with solar power. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see the huge potential. Everybody sees the potential of solar power in the U.S., and it's, it's unachieved right now. Mm -hmm. um, everybody thinks it's going to happen, and we all want to be in the right position when things really start to snowball. Yes, I think they have uh, solar idea swaps, and hopefully there will be more and more ideas generated. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. Lots um, of great ideas. And as far as um, the fact that uh, in the past four years, we've had in a Department of Energy with uh, Secretary Chu, Secretary Steve, uh, Stephen Chu, right, yes. in being in the office, how did you find that playing into the ease or not so easy position for a company such as yours? to be playing on both continents? Uh, well, I mean, I think uh, Mr. Chu's done a great job. He's really pushed a lot of things forward that needed to be pushed forward, and um, you can always do more, but mm -hmm. you could have also done a lot less. Um, and there were a lot of interesting incentive ideas that came out uh, specifically pushing American-made projects and American content. And, and then we had the whole uh, tariff issue that came up, and so that's really what uh, inspired us to try and have some American-made panels, have capacity here in the U.S., because strategically that's very important. And, and it does bring jobs here, and it, it, it really does help out yes. with what everybody's trying to do. So I think, uh, I think it's, it's the right direction to be moving in, and there's just so much more to do. Oh, yes. Installation itself, there, that would generate so much local jobs here, for, definitely. Exactly. Not to mention uh, it would bring a much cleaner, safer uh, country. Exactly. Not to mention nobody owns the sun, not yet. Not, so, not, that's right, that's so right. So that would be a, a wonderful thing if we do not have to get into a lot of conflict of interest among nations. Yeah, and so. um, you know, people argue right now about um, where capacity is, who's producing what, but if you really think about where we need to be, in the next couple of decades and where we are now with how much we're, we're installing, mm -hmm. it's orders of magnitude larger. And so even the biggest companies in the world right now would really just be a drop in the bucket compared to what's happening. There's mm -hmm. so much that can be done. And you know, I'm, I just hope to be around and see all this happen. I think it's exciting to be part of it. Oh, we're hoping, we're hoping. I think what we need, that's what we're trying to do in sunfuture.net is uh, to uh, generate public awareness to uh, help people uh, as a whole in U.S. That's to right. be aware of the fact that uh, we are, as a matter of fact, some states have already reached grip parity. And right. now, exactly. as time goes on, there's going to be more and more. There's going to be a lot of activity. Exactly. And, I uh, think um, one thing people don't realize is just how affordable solar is really becoming. Mm -hmm. uh, these last two years have seen just exponential drops in pricing. And it's happened so fast that 
the public and policymakers aren't, it's caught them by surprise. When they finally realize mm -hmm. how affordable solar energy is becoming, then they start to formulate laws and policy that takes years to grind through, and then by the time it comes out, it's outdated. Yes. And uh, you know that's something we, we'd work with. We bring in finance options for projects of all types, and we've seen a lot of do-it-yourselfers get involved too, because it just, it just makes sense now. Very good. We're looking forward to uh, Perlite Solar uh, being used on a lot of rooftops and yes, in general here. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank Signing you. off, Susan Sun on the Maker with SunIsReacher.net. Mm -hmm.